Greetings everyone. Welcome to Bohosi Kupe channel. We are back yet again with a great uh, presentation. We hope that you have been enjoying yourselves and uh, going over uh, the videos and uh, the material that we have presented in the past. Today we bring you a, a very interesting and controversial uh, subject. And as always, we're going to keep it short because uh, we don't want to um, you know, bore you with unnecessary details or things that actually don't cut straight to the point, okay? Because here at Bohosi Kupe, we only cut straight to the chase. Everything else does not matter. If it's not simplified and it's complicated, then uh, somewhere in there, there's a, a plethora of uh, falsehoods. All right. So, without um, further ado, my name is Basimani Bokopani, a.k.a. Mighty Anape. And as always, we ask that you please click the subscribe button and subscribe to our channel and that notification button, ping it so that you do not miss out on the videos or the materials that we present. And again, share the material, share the videos with other people. So we're going to address this subject. Um, I came across this uh, topic um, some years ago when I used to participate in the quote unquote uh, conscious community uh, when I uh, resided in the state of New York, right? specifically New York City. Um, and I used to go to lectures and this is where I first uh, came across this. And, you know, in listening to, you know, to people talk, um, you know, I somewhat recognized some of the terminologies that were being, that was being used, especially, you know, hieroglyphs. And I kept thinking to myself, hmm, this sounds more like, you know, the language that you speak, but it sounds a little bit funny or spoken in, you know, a, a different tone. Of course, I did not have any access to um, materials that I could study at the time, but I eventually uh, made the effort to actually find the material and, of course, went through initiation and learned how to read and write. And the basic fundamentals that I gained through initiation allowed me to dedicate myself into doing more research and, you know, uncovering more and more stuff and being able to bring it in a perspective that is uh, clear. All right. With that said, we'll go right into it. Who were the Tamahu? All right. Or who are the Tamahu? These, the Tamahu, are the people uh, at number four right here with feathers uh, in their hair, all right, as you can see them in this uh, image, all right. So the purpose of uh, this is to provide the translation of Tamahu from Setswana Susutu perspective and evince that the Tamahu name is not foreign to Batswana Basotu languages and to also show that ancient Egyptians used color to designate people and that it was a racial marker. Right? as much as it was descriptive of the people. The issue of race cannot be exhausted without knowing the true meanings of names. If we don't know the true meanings of names, then, you know, we, what that we're trying to say about race will be mainly speculation with some, you know, good guesses here and there. All right? Um... So, who is this Nesut? Nesut Biti Seti the first, right? This is Nesut Biti Seti the first. I'm using Nesut Biti, not the actual uh, translation into my own language. We already have it, um, the translation for Nesut Biti, right? It is found in our languages, but for the sake of uh, you know, general conversation, we use this and then the others will be found in initiation. Um, he was a military general, fought several battles during the reign of his father, including his own reign. 
He rebuilt the temples and ruins of Egypt. He is regarded as the Pharaoh who kicked Moses out of Egypt. He has 96 names. All right. He is the first to use the name Tamahu found in his tomb. All right. The famous uh, tomb of Seti the first. So many people have uh, speculated and said that, you know, the Tamahu um, are Libyans. And these are Libyans right here, dressed in, uh, draped in um, what you would consider, quote unquote, the, um, the Semitic um, cloak, you know, priestly cloak. Right with uh, stripes and tassels at the at the bottom. Of course, they're dressed in white. These are uh, Libyans. All right, the women are cloaked in those things. Okay, when you look them at them side by side, um, you know, yes, for, except for the skin color, you may say no, it doesn't look like them exactly, right? Um, but of course, uh, with times. Uh, clothing, culture, and all of those things, they seem to change, or at least some people seem to use uh, morphing, you know, the changing of their own culture as they move from place, place to place by morphing themselves and intermixing with other people so that they do not get detected, right? Very, very um, smart. But we also have these people that are also considered to be Libyans. These are Libyans, dark-skinned Libyans, black Libyans. All right, so the question is, were they ancient Egyptians referring to these Libyans and these Libyans as the same people? Obviously not, you know, when they were depicting the, uh, the Tamahu on their walls. So these were, um, you know, although, the, you know, I would consider that these dark-skinned Libyans were the first people in that region of Libya, but the others who are the, um, the uh, Tamazigh, they're called, they, and they are the, um, they worship uh, Amen, they have the temples of Amen in, in the oasis uh, of uh, Libya. Um, they came. Uh, they came from the regions of the Levant. These people, All right? But are they the same as these people? All right, that's the question. And are the Libyans the same as these people? All right, that's another question. So here are the Tamahu. And let us go into analyzing the name. As you can see, they have some interesting, uh, you know, things on, on their arms. You know, a cross, a tattoo, you know, with a cross, right? Uh, sometime in the future, we'll go into this and, you know, break it down. Uh, what is it that they have uh, tattooed on themselves? Okay. The word, the first uh, word that you see that is actually uh, written, it's uh, between them, right? Chamahu, right? This is the first one that we see right here, all right? Uh, it's a ch sound, but it's also a ta or a da sound, right? Uh, and then we have the mach um, here in mach or mech, right, u, right, or this glyph by itself, the number two has the mhw consonant by itself, um, but complementary, you use the g43 to complement the sound, okay, so how do we pronounce that, tumeho, tumeho or tumehua, tumeho or tumehua, tumehua, Okay. And then we have uh, the second one, um, which is uh, um, the the T or to or ta, right? T or 
ta. And um, me or ma. Me, the M, or ma. Let me leave it as it is. Okay. And um, we have uh, the next glyph, the V31. Uh, ha or ha. Right? It is both sound. Ha or ha. Ha, ha or ha. And then uh, the M17 glyph, E, A, A. In this case, it's E and A. And then we have the determinatives, 5, 6, 7, and the plural marker, number 8. Do me hiwa, do me hiwa, or do me hiwa, right? Or just simply tamaha. Right? That's another word, tamaha, in reference to, um, you know, uh, people. And of course, you'll find out what tamaha means, right? Um, then we have uh, the same one. Right here, um, tumeho, tumeho, or tamaho. That's another way that you can render it. Tumeho, tumeho, or tamaho. Just like the first one. And um, the last one that we have is tu or tu, right? Ta, right? Ju, ta, or ta. Me, right? Uh, ha, 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 or ka. Ha, ha, ka. Right? And we have wa. Wa. A determinative, number five, and a plural marker. Alright? So, what is that? Tumeho, tumehua, or tumehua. Tumehua. What is that? What does that all mean? Tumeho is drawn blood or extracted blood. Tumeha is mark left by drawing blood, cupping. Right? Tumehua or tumehua, that which derived from drawn blood or made red. Okay? Tumehi, something that causes red coloration or turns red. Tumesi. Color used for dyeing or making things red. Tumeso or tomoso, it means red extraction or dye. Tamaha or tamaha, red with white spots like skin color of people, Asian, whites, mixed races, etc. All right. Um, what does that look like? It looks like this. Forget what this skin condition is, but it, it is what um, uh, people of European descent have, right? Um, they have this color, and this color would be called tamaha, right? Tamaha or tumeho, right? Meaning that uh, blood showing or being, you know, being extracted to the surface or being brought up to the surface, right? It's a condition. Um, and then, of course, uh, the process of cupping, right, is tumeho, meaning blood extraction, right, and then it leaves like these blotches, which can be compared to what you see right here um, on the skin, hence tumeho, right, or tumeho, right. So. How do we justify that? We already know, you know, they are uh, words that um, speak to this, right? To, T, to, M, me, S, or Z, all right? S, wa, O, determinative, plural, and plural marker, all right? What is this? To, me, so, redness or rudiness. So, if I was already explained, um, previously, tumeso in Setswana is what? Tumeso, red extraction dye, right? Red extraction dye, right? So it says redness, rudiness, okay? And then we have um, another word, 
that has uh, you know all the uh, the main similarities with uh, the word tama tamaha or tumehua, uh, right? And to t to m me ha or ha ha or ha ye or e determinative plural marker tumehi or tumehi red ochre, right? Tumehi, red ochre, right? Um, as you can see, there are definite uh, similarities between this word, right, and this word in terms of construction. The differences is, you know, the reference. What is one referring to? Um, where is the proof? Of course, uh, you know, you go into historical accounts, but the word is known. Um, this is uh, from the tribes of Freiburg uh, district, page 16. It says that um, John Campbell says that the Tamaha seemed to be a mongrel race derived from Thapin and Bushmen, probably Hottentots. Several of my old informants said, say that they were Korana or early Bantu mixed with Korana Hottentots. Also, the Batharo tradition explaining the origin of the Tzatzin say that once a tapping woman gave birth to a Korana child, and that is why its descendants, the Batzatzin, have a light complexion. All right, that light complexion, skin showing. Uh, rather blood showing through the skin tamaha all right even tamaha is actually a color is uh, red with white spots all right red with white spots which is what you see here red with white blotches okay this color is called tamaha all right so these uh, people also would be called tamaha Right, um, their color, their skin color would also be called tamah, um, who are this color. Because, uh, you know, with time and genetically, people have uh, adjusted, you know, from showing a lot of blood through the skin to being the way that they are today. But in olden days, of course, we know with an inability to spend uh, time in the sun, some of these people actually showed a lot of blood or they actually stay in the sun, they turn red, right? And they show blood in, you know, in the sun, except, except for our um, Kwe, right? Our Kwe uh, uh, people, right? They've been around with us for a long time. Now, question, hmm. Tamahu are Jews? Are the Jews the Tamahu? Well, that question remains to be answered. And we conclude by these statements. Tamahu is a derived term which alludes to skin color, and the proper reading of is Tamahue or Tamaho or Tumeho or Tumehua which terms allude to a race of people derived from the process of blood extraction and hybridization, in essence, a creation, right? Through this process of blood extraction. Now, of course, um, the question is, where is the nation of Islam correct? Hmm, it seems that the nation of Islam has been correct, right? And we just uh, actually proved it by breaking down the name and what it means. The nation of Islam has been correct. Of course, uh, you know, with other things, um, we, may not, we may not agree, but when it comes to the, what this name actually means, you know, um, they are correct. Although the nation of Islam and uh, the Moors, they have not actually provided a breakdown of the word 
it was just simply, you know, uh, based on either the history that is known in initiation camps or uh, a, a good guess. But here we have the actual evidence. All right. Ancient Egyptians used it to designate people who came from the northern regions, a.k.a. Europe. There is no doubt about it. Okay. And color and race was known and used by the ancient Egyptians. No question about it. Anything to the contrary um, is just uh, mere speculation. Because you cannot do it. You cannot go into the issue of color and race without knowing what these terms mean. All right, with that said, we thank you for uh, subscribing to Bohosi Kupe. We thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you on the other side with more interesting content.